The TV man is not your friend. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. It's very cute how empire apologists talk about driving Putin from Ukraine so there can be peace, like that's a real thing. Like if it happened, the war would just stop, and the U.S. alliance wouldn't with absolute certainty continue the attack and work to topple Moscow by any means necessary. There is zero reason to take on faith the MSM narrative that Ukraine is kicking Putin's ass and victory is imminent. But even if that did happen, there'd be less than zero reason to believe the fighting would stop there. If anything, it would get much more dangerous from that point. This doesn't end with Russia leaving Ukraine. It ends with Putin being replaced with a Yeltsin-like U.S. vassal, and the eventual balkanization of the Russian Federation. Really, it doesn't end until Beijing has been subverted, and the U.S. empire secures total global hegemony. Or when the empire collapses. Or when we all get nuked and die. Empire apologists don't even really deny this. Here's a tweet by NATO think tanker Anders Ostland. When the war is over, there will be no Russia. Marjorie Taylor Greene being better than progressive Democrats on Ukraine is noteworthy not because it makes Greene look good, but because it makes those progressive Democrats look really, really, really bad. People who think Tucker Carlson is fighting the establishment are exactly the same as people who think the squad is fighting the establishment. Exactly the same. Same people, slightly different bumper stickers. It's obvious that every member of the, quote, populist right, who's now getting praise for being correct about Ukraine, will function as a virulent empire apologist once the imperial crosshairs inevitably move from Moscow to Beijing. We know this because of their rhetoric about China today. Do you know what happens to mainstream media figures who provide real resistance to empire agendas? They get fired. Ask Phil Donahue or Chris Hedges. The fact that Tucker Carlson is a top pundit on imperial media, Murdoch media no less, means he's an agent of the empire. This belief that there are factions of the mainstream media working against the empire is as naive as the belief that there are factions of mainstream U.S. politicians working against the empire. The empire doesn't platform people who pose a threat to it. This isn't complicated. The TV man is not your friend. I run into far too many people who oppose war and can't understand why I'm saying things about issues like China, which disagree with what they're being told by their populist anti-war hero. The propaganda campaign against China isn't going to get better. It's going to get much, much worse. And it's important to start fighting it early because it's going to be bad. They're not worried about the spread of disinformation. They're worried about the spread of information. Your rulers are not concerned that you'll start learning wrong things about COVID or Ukraine. They are worried you'll start learning true things about your rulers. The imperial power structure, which runs Silicon Valley and which is imprisoning Julian Assange, and which literally just admitted it's circulating disinformation about Russia, is not worried about disinformation. And it's hilarious that anyone is pretending otherwise. Oh, no, no, you don't understand. If the U.S. and its allies didn't give weapons to Al-Qaeda and Nazi militias, the bad guys might win. The one single time the U.S. had a monopoly on nuclear weapons, at the same time it was at war, it used them. Not because it needed to, but as a show of force. That was the dawn of the modern U.S. empire. That's how it was born. And it never got any saner from there. There is a kind of poetic beauty, I guess, in the way the U.S. empire was birthed onto the world stage by a nuclear blast and will probably die in the same way. Psychological abuse is still abuse. Psychological tyranny is still tyranny. 
The fact that a large amount of the tyranny in so-called free democracies expresses as mass-scale psychological manipulation does not make it less tyrannical. It just makes it more photogenic. All of religion, and almost all spirituality, is glorified escapism at best, and tyrannical psychological domination at worst, and humanity would be better off without it. But what remains just might save the world. <laughs>